Portugal to the Indy in Brazil. A Weekly Show by Geisa Fernandes. Episode 4 In Mondrian's Mind In Mondrian's studio is the name of a documentary production from the year 2010. As the title reveals, it's about Mondrian's relationship to its working place and also living place, his studio, which was painted and designed in geometrical forms and colors just like his paintings. I'm a great fan of the Dutch painter Piet Mondrian, one of the grands of modern art. And maybe that's why this projection moved me so deeply. The documentary shows a lot of facts about Mondrian's life and some short stories, interviews with his former friends. And there's this particular story that I would like to tell you now. Mondrian found fame and recognition in his late years. But, as we all can imagine, he also had to pay bills, eat, pay his rent before he was successful. In order to pay his bills, he had to draw and paint. A lot of flowers that, yet beautiful, were definitely not what he was looking for in art. So we have young Mondrian, and well, I like to imagine the story happening in one of those theaters where you went to see Josephine Baker. Mondrian's a great fan of Josephine Baker. And please, if you don't know who Josephine Baker was, Google it immediately and fight it out, please. Anyway, here we have young Mondrian leaving the theater with his friends, making comments about the show they had seen. Although Mondrian was not exactly the social type, at that night he was in his best. So, he went to a lovely café in Paris. And while having his second, maybe third drink, Mondrian made this confession to one of his closest friends. If I have to paint another flower in order not to starve, I would rather starve. Wow, I thought. A love so big, a passion so intense, an idea of self-value so accurate. This impressed me a lot. Well, let's think that Mondrian probably did have to paint a few more flowers here and there before he achieved long-persuaded recognition in art. The point is, he knew he was special, and he knew that if he had to die to prove the world he was right, well, then he would rather die, instead of silencing his voice and maybe get a regular, well-paid job in the fervent Paris of the 20s. Come on, history is full of such examples, examples of artists that gave almost literally, and sometimes literally, their lives defending their work. We tend to love such stories. We tend to think of these artists as heroes, as um, survivors. And we all like good survivor story. But as I told you, it's been quite a while, as I saw this documentary on TV. And why am I talking about it right now? <laughs> Because, because it's been a pretty tough week, and I, I had to remember Mondrian's sentence a lot. And starvation goes from a beautiful romantic statement to a quite concrete possibility. When you catch yourself thinking about your next meal in a way that you never thought before, including the thought maybe there won't be a next meal, well, then, my friend, that's the time 
when the big question pops up. Is this all worth it? If the answer is yes, of course it is, then go ahead. You are an indie musician. If the answer is, well, you know, no, no, then think again. Would you be able to stop for something else? And please, I'm not saying that neither musicians nor any other professional category should be not even remotely related to starvation. We all deserve a fair payment. What I am saying is that being an indie musician is sometimes so hard while talking about myself, it's the holiday season, because my latest crowdfunding campaign was so unsuccessful. I know it's a kind of taboo of saying that things are unsuccessful nowadays. I should be in this Instagram, Facebook mode and saying, but it was great and I learned it so much and I could learn about myself and all the blah, 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 blah. Let's get things straight. Sometimes things won't be the way you wish them to. Sometimes you make mistakes. All right, you learn from your mistakes. Oscar Wilde said, that's how we call experience. Well, that's all very nice. But sometimes, you catch yourself asking this big question. Is it all worth it? And you think, okay, now that's cool, that's my thing. Nevertheless, you should be prepared. For rainy days... Cloudy seasons, very cold winters, very long nights. But then again, what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. All the wonderful Uruguayan multi-artist Santiago Tabela that produced my latest work told me one lesson that just like that sentence on the documentary on Mondrian, I simply never forgot. And the lesson from Santiago is, is it too hard to handle? Is it too strong and intense to handle? Then make something out of it, something artistical. Record it, write it. Make some kind of artistical movement out of it. You know what? It works. By doing something out of your pain, You actually get over it. You say, you see, I'm the boss here. And I'm stronger than you. Say, so, you know Dave Byrne and that song, Like Humans Do? Gee, I'm full of quotations in this episode. But anyway, I simply adore the verse. I'm aching, I'm shaking, I'm breaking. Like humans do. That's it. There will always be ups and downs in any professional's life. And believe me, a lot of ups and downs in an indie musician's career. And it's okay to shake and break and ache like humans do. And if you're a real artist, you somehow learn how to make something out of your bad days Say, who likes a singer or a songwriter that can only deal with one single subject? I don't. We all know life is really colorful. And a real artist can always use an extra color in his or her palette. Thank you so much for joining me in this fourth episode of How to be Indie in Brazil. I shall now leave you one of my, let's say, rainy days productions. It's a tune called The Right Song. And please be nice in your comments. This is a draft version, you know, home recorded and everything. But I would really like to share this song with you. For lyrics, search for The Right Song on my YouTube channel. Oh, and again, the answer to that question. Is it all worth it? Are you kidding? Of course it is. Bye for now and um beijo. What songs are the right songs to play? What words are the right words to say? If you don't know what to play, 
or to say or to feel. If the world is intoxicating you and it's always intoxicating you, what are the right songs to play, the right words to say? When you know nobody's listening, nobody's. Is there anyone here? What are the right songs to play, the right words to say? When no words at all, when no songs at all can tell you the way out of here, can show you there is a way out of here. Coming to the border of sanity, jumping on the abyss of madness, finding out that down here, up there, same thing, same old, same song, same word. What are the right songs to play? What are the right words to say? If you don't know, that's okay. If you don't know, you can follow me this way. How to be indie in Brazil. A weekly show by Geisa Fernandes.